Shri Tripura Rahasyam Mahatmya Khandam Aum Shri Ganesha Sharada Guru Bhyo Namaha Namaste. So this is the beginning of the second chapter of the Mahatmya Khanda of Sri Tripura Rahasya. And uh, last time, Sumedha had had a wonderful vision of the Devi Tripura. And he went to his guru and reported it, and his guru gave him more initiations and sent him to Madurai to practice. So then after five years of practice, <laughs> you'd think he was done then by then, but no, because he had a big mission to perform. He had to write this Tripura Rahasya, which is a big job demanding a lot of erudition. Sanskrit is not an easy language. And Sumedha was still rather young, even though in those days people lived for a long time much longer than they do now. So he's sitting there by the temple in Madurai and he's meditating. And within himself, he sees Narada appear. And then he opens his eyes and he sees Narada outside too. So after welcoming Narada with appropriate prayers, he asks him this question. How is it that I saw you within and now I see you without? And so the opening of the second chapter is Narada's amazing reply. My dear Haritayana, you have told me about your wonderful vision like an erudite person and not like a young boy. Explain to me your good words that you saw me within you. With reference to what? What is its nature? Here it is not apt to say as within your own body. Standing on the earth, you have seen me surrounded by great space. Okay, so who is Narada Muni? He's a spaceman. He's a transcendental time traveler. <laughs> he appears anywhere and everywhere, at the key moments of inflection, to influence the course of events. Some say that he's an incarnation of Vishnu, because generally he's involved with Vishnu's pastimes of the maintenance of the cosmic creation. That's Vishnu's role. Brahma creates, Vishnu maintains, Shiva destroys. So Narada appears, and generally he gives special blessings or advanced knowledge to people to further the course of events for the maintenance of the whole creation. So in this way, he's acting actually as a potency of the mother, of Tripura Sundari, because the mother is the one who wants to make sure that her children are taken care of, isn't it? So she sends great sages and saints and even incarnations like Vishnu to maintain the universe, and make sure that the conditions are right for her children. So in this way, Narada appears and he always appears with great compassion. This is Narada's feature. Narada is uh, actually a, a figure in all of the Puranas, in all the different works about Vedic history. Uh, and uh, it doesn't matter what lineage they're from, Narada pops up anywhere and everywhere. <laughs> so here he is, and he calls Sumedha Haritayana. Now what does Haritayana mean? Hari, of course, means God, especially Vishnu. 
and especially the lion incarnation. Narasimha, Hari, means lion. So, Ayana means one who approaches. So, Hari Tayana is one who approaches God in the form of Vishnu and in his incarnation as the lion. So, of course, Devi is always accompanied by lions. She uh, rides a lion and many lions come with her and protect her. So she's always surrounded by powerful lions. And these lions live with her. They are uh, residents of her dhamma, her uh, realm in the spiritual world. So uh, Haritayana is Sumedha's new name given by Narada Muni because he is approaching Vishnu and in his lion protecting form to protect the universe by glorifying Devi, by glorifying the mother. The mother principle is really the cause of the sustenance of the universe. If we left it up to the guys, they would destroy everything. <laughs> As we see today, that the world is now under the control of a male dominant society and they're doing their best to trash the whole place as quickly as possible. So uh, meanwhile millions of people are homeless and they're spending trillions of dollars on military stuff. So this is not approved by the mother um, and she is reacting by changing the climate making their, all their efforts just useless. I love it. <laughs> so anyway, Haritayana, now the sage, Haritayana, who was about to become the author of a great Vedic work. So Narada addresses him that you ask your question like an erudite person, not like a young boy. Well, he appears like a young boy. Because in those days, even though he's been studying and doing practices for many, many years, people lived much longer, at least a thousand years, maybe 10,000 years. So he looks just like a young boy, but he's actually very experienced. But then Narada says something really mind-blowing. Explain to me your good words that you saw me within you. Huh? With reference to what? Within what? See, this is one of the uh, assumptions that we all make about who and what we are. <clears throat> that we are the body. That we are the senses. And when we look through the senses of the body, we, we, we call that looking out there, outside ourselves. And when we turn our consciousness and look within, then we say that's inside of us, within us. So Narada is drawing our attention to this assumption that we are this body, that that body is the existence but actually, from his point of view, <laughs> the body is non-existent. Because Narada is a transcendental spaceman. He travels in time and space at will, simply by vibrating his vena. He is always surrounded by great space, great unlimited space. Why is that? Because he is on the Ajatta platform. Remember our diagram with the four levels, the four views, darshanams? So Narada is on the highest platform of Ajatavada. And to him, the material universe doesn't even exist. It's just an appearance. It's just an illusion. So he can pop up anywhere, anytime. He can travel. He can move. He can do things, influence the course of events. 
because he knows what's going to happen. <laughs> so this is Narada Muni. And he's saying, now, consider this. Are you really this body? Can you really say that this body is real? Because every night when you go to sleep, it disappears. Watch your consciousness at night when you're going to sleep. At first, you withdraw from the senses and you're present in the mind. And then things within the mind begin to change. The mind starts making up stories and it can weave intricate and even bizarre <laughs> tales about all kinds of things. You can never predict which way it's going to go. And these, of course, are dreams. But there's a moment where the waking consciousness and dreaming consciousness connect. And this is called the Sandhya. And in that Sandhya, there's another state of consciousness called Turiya, the fourth, which is the substrate underlying all the three types of ordinary consciousness, waking, Jagrat, dreaming, Swapna, and deep sleep, Sushupta. So in the junctions between those different types of consciousness, those three types of consciousness, we can get a glimpse of the reality, the light that illuminates everything. And this light is like the lamp of a projector. It projects images that appear to be real, but because they're only temporary, how could they be real? It's just like going to the movies and the projector is throwing these images on the screen. And then at the end of the movie, they turn the projector off. The lamp goes out. Huh? The house lights come on. And you see all that was there is, is just a screen, just a flat wall. So what happened to all those images? What happened to those bodies, those people, all those events? Huh? Well, they're gone. Just like when we go to sleep, the waking consciousness goes away, the body goes away, all of the events, all the personalities, everything <laughs> disappears, just evaporates into nothing, and we enter the dream world. And the dream world, of course, has a different set of rules. <laughs> but still, it's limited in the same way. Even deep sleep, when we're resting in the lap of Brahman, is temporary. After all, we wake up. So all these temporary states are more or less illusions. They're more or less projections. Huh? And when we start to realize Turiya by our deep meditation, then we can see all this very easily. And the goddess Tripura, well, Tripura means the three worlds, the earthly, celestial, and the world of the gods, but it also means the three states of consciousness. Therefore, she is the Turiya, the substrate of pure awareness underlying all the other states. And by worshiping her, by meditating on her, one can realize this state. One becomes empowered to see it. And in this way, we can approach real self-realization. Aung Tatsa. Aung Rihi Aung.